I've just painted over 60 Urukai warriors, but in doing so, I've created a problem that we now need to solve. Let me explain. In most miniature games, we have several different unit types, like this Urukai shield warrior, who can get supported by this Urukai spearman, or the Urukai crossbowman, who's doing his own thing in his own separate detachment. So you end up with all of these different troops to manage, all with different roles to fulfill. So how are you meant to move them all across the table while still maintaining unit cohesion? Moving all these models as your army grows very quickly becomes really difficult. You have to move every single miniature in individually and it just takes ages. My arm is really aching. So realistically we only have three possible solutions here. Solution one, we can just yeet them across the table like a Neanderthal. But we're not playing orcs, these are super sophisticated orcs. So we need a more tasteful solution than that. Solution two, we can move them one by one. Well, not really, because I need to move more than 50 individual troops one by one and measure to make sure I'm not cheating. You see, most men don't know how long six inches actually is. You can check with your wife if you don't know what I mean by that. And you might think I'm exaggerating, but let's take a look. Let's say it takes you five seconds to move each model. That's 50 times five seconds. So that's 300 seconds or five minutes to move everything in your army. Not even adding on the additional thinking time, how long it takes you to measure, or any terrain tests and the dice rolls needed for that. So before you know it, the movement phase takes over 10 minutes and you're literally sweating. And then you have to wait another 10 minutes for your opponent to move his 60 miniatures as well. It's a brutal circle of punishment that I know many of you seem to enjoy, but a punishment nevertheless. But one, we no longer have to endure, my friend. Enter solution three. You see, Games Workshop, blessed be thy name, has actually already solved this problem by creating movement trays for Age of Sigmar, Lord of the Rings, and Warhammer 40,000. So you can move your forces quickly and easily across the battlefield. But did anyone else notice that they didn't actually bother using their own movement trays for their own promotional video when showing the Urukai warriors? They're just standing on rectangular cutouts of terrain. Now for the Lord of the Rings movement trays, each one of them only costed four pounds. It was a different time, but this was sadly back in 2009 and Games Workshop has since stopped selling them. But don't worry, you can find them on eBay for quadruple the price. Okay, so clearly that isn't an option. But later in 2019, they added movement trays again, themed around Warhammer 40,000 Apocalypse. And they made a whole Warhammer community article about how you can use them in Lord of the Rings as well. And the whole article is just a 1,000 word essay preaching about how many problems movement trays solve. They solve so many problems that Games Workshop then removed them completely from the store and never spoke about them ever again. Almost like some kind of forbidden fruit. But Games Workshop know how powerful movement trays are. And if we had enough of them, we could quite literally wage war and take over the entire company. So therefore, they stopped producing them, and now we have to make our own movement trays. And by God, they will be cheap, but glorious. You see, instead of these transparent trays, I actually prefer making movement trays out of materials that match the theme of the army I'm creating, so I can truly immerse myself. This is what we're going to be making, and here's a quick guide on how to do it yourself. All you need to do in return is like the video if you want to unlock the true power of the movement tray. So we're going to be using these cheap MDF bases in order to make these more realistic looking bases that we can fit with our army bases. And then we have this really cohesive looking force moving across the tabletop quickly. And that is how we're going to solve this problem. So let's break this down into steps. Firstly, we're going to grab our laser cut MDF bases, which you can also get from the link below, where they're available in any size and at a cheap cost. Next, we're going to base the MDF, and I'm going to be using AK Interactive Dry Ground for this. This is basically just a tub of pre-mixed texture paste that creates realistic terrain effects. It's only $10 for 250 milliliters of the stuff and it lasts for ages. I've painted four different armies with this one pot and I'm only halfway through. But you could use sand and PVA for a cheap alternative if you wish. 
You can also add bits of cut up cork to the base to create rocky outcrops on the ground as well. Just take care not to put any materials into the circles within the movement tray, since this is obviously where the miniatures will eventually be sitting. Speaking of our miniatures, I almost use the exact same basing process for my miniatures as I do for the movement trays. And I'll have a new video guide on that soon enough. So there's something to subscribe for. Next we have step two. Once this is dry, we're gonna undercoat each base in black spray paint to ensure a full even coverage. Next we have step three. We're gonna grab some dirt cheap acrylic paints from Amazon. Brown and white is all we need, along with some water. And then we're gonna mix these up on the palette. Starting with the brown, we're gonna cover the entire base in this dark brown color to represent the muddy ground that the army is walking over. I'm using my wife's makeup brush to do this so I can get an even full coverage into all of the cracks and rough terrain that we just made. Next, we have step four. With all the bases painted brown, we need to add a bit of white acrylic into the brown paint to make a lighter brown blend. And then we're gonna start dry brushing it over the bases. Make sure you wipe off the excess paint with a kitchen towel so you're only painting the paint onto the raised areas of texture. But remember that it's important that the edges of each movement tray match up with one another. Otherwise you'll end up with a patchwork quilt effect where each one of your movement trays look slightly different and don't really fit together. So as you can see, I've lined up everything next to each other so that doesn't happen. Next we have step five. Once dry, I'm going to use the paint pigments from AK Interactive to create this sort of dusty, muddy effect. By literally getting an old brush, because this stuff ruins brushes, get some of the pigments and cover the movement trays in it. I'm using a combination of colors to create a bit of diversity, but it's gonna create a dry, muddy effect now. Next on step six, we need to paint up the rocks using black and white to create gray. We can paint all the raised areas of rocky outcrops, but don't be afraid to gently tap the gray paint over the raised areas of ground to create the appearance of pebbles and other stones that would sit atop the ground like so. After that initial layer dries, I'm gonna go back in with a lighter gray, so just add a bit of white to the current gray, and then just dab some highlights onto the rocks to create the appearance of even more texture there. Next for step seven, we need to add some grass tufts to make the base come to life. But first, place your painted miniatures onto the movement trays and just check to make sure everything looks even and nothing looks out of place. Since we based and painted the movement trays and bases with a consistent even coverage, all the miniatures look uniform and everything blends in together. So it just looks like all these miniatures are standing on one single base. So now we need to get our grass tufts, ideally ones that suit the environment we're creating here, and add them to the base. You can make your own grass tufts or you can buy them from the link below to fit your army's theme, be it in snow, deserts, woodland or whatever. They have different colored grass for everything. After applying the super glue to the base, I'll be using tweezers to press the grass into position. This way I don't accidentally super glue myself to the grass and trust me that's happened more than once. You can also tear up some grass tufts to create a ununiform look. Remember, this is nature, so things aren't all perfect little circles. So try to place the grass randomly across the edges and a bit in the center to create the appearance of a natural looking environment. And now your movement trays are almost done, but there's actually a step A. If you like, you can paint the rims of your miniatures black and also the inner circles of the movement trays can also be painted black as well. This gives them a more sort of polished uniform finish that frames the army. However, it does somewhat interrupt the illusion of your army being on a single base, since the black circles interrupt that uniform appearance. So I'm honestly not sure if I should paint all of the rims of my miniatures black or not. Let me know what you guys think in the comments though. But before I go, I want to share with you a dark secret that Games Workshop doesn't want you to know. You see, there was also a fourth game. Not Warhammer 40k, Middle Earth, or Age of Sigma. There was another game. A fourth game. A secret game only spoken about in the darkest of corners, where nobody would overhear you. You younger whippersnappers among us won't remember this game, but it was called Warhammer Fantasy, and it was played 
on square bases. And the miniatures were actually designed to sit on the square bases and all line up next to each other and then be placed on a square movement tray so they could be moved around easily without pain without suffering. But this game was considered too fast paced for the younger generation and so the Age of Suffering, I mean Age of Sigma, began with its round bases. Curves that could not offend. Speaking of suffering, this channel isn't monetized so if you want to donate to the link below I'd appreciate it. If not, you can just drop a like on the video. But never share what you've heard here today.